Hey everyone, this is Kodajit, your best friend in programming and today I have an introductory lesson on C Sharp. In this tutorial, we will talk about what are variables and constants in C Sharp. Well, let's start with the basics. Programming is nothing but the science of data handling and processing. So what do you do in programming? You get some data, you process it and you try to output some data. And that data can be anything. It can be some instructions on the monitor to show something. It can be some audio or some sound from the speakers or it can be any sort of input, right? So the data has to be stored in the memory. You know what memory is, right? Any data that comes in, any data that you want to output, it has to be stored in the memory. Now this memory can be the physical RAM. There is also cache, which is right next to the processor. And there is also the hard disk where you store the files and all the other data. Now, when something is in the memory, that's the RAM or the cache, and you want to retrieve it quickly, you should know how to retrieve it. That's why every unit of data, every piece of data that you have, it has an address. So your memory is actually a series of blocks, addresses, and you can put stuff in there. But to retrieve that stuff, of course, you need to know what the address is. And that is usually a number, but you cannot really refer to numbers and program because you can't really comprehend numbers, right? 101, 112, these are not going to make sense for you. That's why you cannot refer to addresses, memory addresses with numbers and make sense of it. To make things easier, what you do is you give these addresses labels, labels, just human comprehensible names that you give these addresses that are assigned to the data points, to the data that you've put in. So you give labels to the addresses and the addresses in turn point to the data. So your labels point to the data and that's what you think that the label, that name that you have is directly pointing to the data. Now you can mostly call them variables. Variables are the labels that you give any data. It's a name that you give to the data. Sometimes you also have constants and constants are just labels or data addresses that don't change. So if you got some information in the memory and you know that you won't be changing that information, you can make it a constant. So variables and constants are basically the same thing, a label, but the variables change. That is, you can change the data in that variable and in constant, you don't change the data. That's it. Now C Sharp does give you multiple options to declare variables and constants. If you want to declare a variable, you can either declare it using the data type, specify the exact data type that the variable is, or you can declare it using the var keyword, or you can declare it using the dynamic keyword. And for a constant, you can either use the const keyword, or there is a special type of constant that you will use in many cases, which you can create by using the read only keyword. And I'm going to show you each of these and what exactly they mean. All right, so we have a console app here and we are just writing the words hello world. So if you run it, you will see the words hello world in the command line. It's compiling right now. So here's the command line. You can see the words hello world. Now what we're doing here is passing a string literal. This is a string literal. Literal is anything that is exactly the value that you want to specify not stored in a label so if you got a number if you got any kind of text all of those are literals and this here is a string literal and we're passing it to a function the function is called right line this parenthesis open and close that's variables or values passed to a function and if you check this function using intellisense you will see that this function expects a value that is of the data type string so we are passing a string literal, which is of the data type string, of course, which is accepted by the console write line. Now, what if we wanted to pass a variable instead of the string literal? What would we do? Let's try this. Let's declare a variable of the type string. Remember, I said you can declare a variable by specifying the data type. That's the data type string here. And let's call this str. This app that is suggesting this code is called github copilot and it's a f it's a free trial app you can get a free trial for two months i recommend it it's gonna make your job a little bit easier but you don't really need it so i have a string 
type variable called str with the world's hello world we will accept that okay and i will just kindly put a exclamation mark and then we're gonna take that string variable and pass it so this time instead of passing a literal we are passing a variable and let's see what happens here we go we got hello world again so you saw your first variable in action now variables can be of multiple data types and if you think about the core data types of c sharp we can have something to store numbers so we can declare an integer type variable and let's call it a and let's put the value 20 so int a equals to 20 now let's try to print a to the console so if we just accept this suggestion we will find that console.writeline is a method which has multiple versions so if you use IntelliSense in the IDE you can see that you can press the up and down arrows to see all the different values that this function can accept and integer is one of those so we'll just find it easily here we have int value so it's accepting an integer so you can print an integer too and let's try that let's see what happens here we have hello world and then the, the number 20 so that's what we had you can declare all kinds of variables this way this one is a long which can handle a bigger number than an integer then we've got a date time data type date time variable we got a character just one character which is put in single quotes string literals are in double quotes and character literals are in single quotes and here we've got an array of integers all right so these are all different kinds of variables declarations of variables but the point is these are variables so you can actually change them and let's try that we had a here let's change that a equals to 30 and if we do console dot right line a let's see what happens you can see here first we had hello world then 20 then hello world 20 because we printed it in the same line and then 30 because we changed the value of a to 30 and this same variable became 30 now we have not printed any of these variables so you can't say them but if we did let's print b and let's print e if you did print them you would see those values too here we go you can see those values and you can change anything from here for example if I want to change B to 10 I can do that and I can try printing B what I cannot do is assign a value of a different type than what this variable is supposed to be so B is a long long is a numeric data type I can only assign numbers to this but if I wanted to assign a string literal what will happen we're gonna get an error that says cannot implicitly convert string to long so you cannot assign a string value to a number similarly you cannot assign a number to a string you will have to convert it to a string a variable of one data type cannot hold the value of variable of another data type so a date time cannot hold a string literal right so understand that in C sharp a variable can only store a single data type if it is declared with that data type this facility this feature is called strict typing so C sharp is a strictly typed language okay so check this out I have appended the variable name in console.writeline and when you run it you can see easily the changes so first we had str which had the value hello world then a was equal to 20 then we printed a and str together then a had 30 b had some <laughs> big number e had c and then b had 10 again so b's value changed and that's what variables can do now i told you earlier that variables can be declared using the data type but there is also another way to declare variables and that is the keyword war war means variant war is the short form for variant and if you had a war type keyword you can assign it any value and the compiler okay so we already have something called def so we gotta go for g when you declare a variable with the type var and you assign any value to it the compiler will try to detect the data type of the variable automatically and give it that data type of course this can only happen when the compiler knows what the value is and what the data type of value is actually that is the true in most of the cases when you assign 
values to variables. So you can just quickly declare them with the var keyword. Don't have to specify data type and the compiler can take care of it. Remember, it's the compiler taking care of this. So this is done at compile time, right? It's not done when your application is running. Before the app is running, the data type is detected and signed. So it's always very efficient. The memory is managed very, very well. Let's try a little exercise. So we have the data type B over here, which is a long. So let's do B dot get type. This is a function that is available on every data type in C sharp. And it will return the data type of this particular variable that you've got. And let's console dot right line it. And also let's console dot right line the data type of G. Let's run it and see what happens. Here we've got B data type int 64. This is the internal data type of C sharp. So int is actually a short form for int 32. When we assign a number 10 to G, it's a smaller number. So the compiler will use a small data type called int 32 to hold the value. But this data type is already specified as long and long is actually just a better name, human readable name so that we can remember it easily for an int 64. Int 64 is long and int 32 is actually the int data type that we used earlier. So I hope you understand what the war keyword does and I encourage you to use it often. There is no problem in using war. You can use it anytime you want. It's not required to strictly declare the data type when the value itself is also known. And then we can also declare a variable using the data type dynamic. So dynamic is a special keyword from C sharp. And what will happen with dynamic is it will take any value that you assign. So if I assign a number to it, it's going to take it and right below it. If I assign a string to it, it's going to take that too. But that doesn't happen with a war. So if I try to assign a string to a war, it's going to protest because this data type is decided at the compile time. The compiler decides that this is an integer data type and you cannot assign a string to an integer. So it will not let you do that. But the dynamic keyword will decide the data type at runtime and you can change it. So if I decide to do something like that, h equals to this is a string that is going to be acceptable too. So basically you can assign anything to a dynamic data type and the compiler will adjust the variable according to that. Let's just try printing these. And let's also put this console.writeLine h right below when we assigned a number. And let's run this. So you can see here h was first a number and then h became a string without any problems. But you cannot do that with any variable that you declare with the data type or with the keyword var. With the keyword dynamic, this is all at runtime, so it can happen. But let me warn you, it's not a good idea to declare variables with dynamic a lot. You should use this sparingly, only for a specific condition. And mostly you should use either var or the data type itself to declare a variable. When you declare a variable as dynamic, the compiler doesn't know what you're going to put in that address and it has to adjust a lot. So the performance of the software that you're building can go down quite a lot if you just declare everything as dynamic and it can also create a lot of errors because you know, when you have a strictly typed language, it also gives you a lot of safety because you cannot assign data wrongly to variables and have problems. Now that you understand variables very well, let's talk about constants. You can declare a constant using the keyword const followed by the data type. So if you wanted a number called j and you wanted it to not be modifiable, you would declare it as a constant. So if you try to modify a constant, the compiler will protest. The left hand side of an assignment must be a variable property or an indexer. Now it's not a variable, it's a constant. So you cannot reassign the constant at all. It will stick to the original value and constants are very useful when you want to declare literals that you want to use all over the program, right? You can use it again and again without the danger of it getting modified by mistake and causing a big disaster. So if you're going to be a defensive programmer, if you're going to protect the code that you write, you should try to use as many things as constant 
whenever you know that the value will not change after you assign it. Let's write the constant j2 and then we have another way to declare constant that I told you about and that was read only. So we've got a read only variable here that says read only int k equals to 12. Now the only problem is the compiler is not ready to accept it. The modifier read only is not valid for this item. Well that is because read only is a special case variable. It can only be used inside of a class or maybe a struct, some, some kind of object, and you can only use it in the constructor. You can only set a value to a read-only variable in a constructor. So we got to declare a class here, got a class called myItem, and let us declare a read-only integer k right now, and let's make it public, and we have set it to 12. Now, automatically when you declare read-only as the member of a class and you set it to a value that is going to go in the constructor by default and you can assign it over here or you can assign it in a constructor. So you can assign it in a constructor too but if you had a function and you try to change the value of k over here that would not work. Because you can see a read-only field cannot be assigned to except in a constructor or an init-only setter. So this type of variable can only be, be assigned in a constructor and you can use it to populate your public properties of a class with some initial values. Maybe you can even pull them from a database and just want them to be the same. You, you want them to be secure and not be changed in the rest of the program. Let's print the constants too. So let's change this to print k instead of change k and we'll just write console. And here at the bottom, we can do console.write line j to print j. We just have to move it above the class right over here. And we can also create an instant of the class. So we'll declare it by, with the class name. We have a variable of the type my item, and we will just assign it to a new instance. And then we'll do my item dot print k. And in this function, we are calling console dot write line. So let's see what happens here. All right. So you can see that the value of j is twenty and k is 13 and that's exactly what we are printing over here j and k this entire project is available in the github repository that i have linked to in the description well this was our entire lesson i really hope you like this lesson you understood variables very well you understood how var and dynamic works and you also understood how to declare constants and read only variables if you like this lesson if you got value from it don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe because I'm going to produce a lot of good quality learning for you on this channel. This is Kodajit, your best friend in programming, signing off.